Okay, let's get started. In this lesson, we will talk about the mass and study all the methods of establishing mass. For that we will use this plane, and so far all vellum settings are default. Now let's pin the top points of the plane, but this time I will do it procedurally since I'm going to change the triangle's density and don't want to update the numbers of the pin points every time. The planar patch node can output various seam groups, including top seams. See, here is the group. That is now regardless of the density of the triangles, the top seam points will always be in this group. So, now let's go to the vellum constraint node and specify this group as pin points. I also want to decently reduce the stretch stiffness to allow it to stretch. As well as let's add 5 sub-steps. The last thing I'm going to do is turn on the pin to target visualization, then check the result. Okay, it is already hanging. Let's move on. Now is the time to talk about mass. Mass plays a significant role in simulation. It affects how particles interact with pop forces and other pieces of vellum geometry and how strong the constraints are. There are several methods for determining mass, let's go through each of them. The first is the unchanged mode, which simply means that the constraint will do not set the mass attribute. Let's take a look at the geometry spreadsheet to see what's going on there. Since we are only interested in mass, let's hide all the attributes and show only the mass. See, the mass values are minus 1, which means that if the mass attribute were present in the geometry, the vellum constraint would not override it. Well, now let's check. Drop down the point wrangle node and create the mass attribute. Float at mass equals to 5. As you can see, instead of minus 1, the mass is now 5. But as soon as we change the mode from unchanged to set uniform mode, the mass will be overridden. So, now it has become 0.1. Well, we can already delete the point wrangle, we no longer need it. Now let's talk about the set uniform mode. It just sets the mass attribute to the specified value. Look, all points receive the given value. Okay, now let me show you how mass affects simulation. You see, while the mass is small, it does not stretch under the influence of gravity. So, let's increase the mass 100 times and see what changes. As you can see, it has already begun to stretch decently. Let's increase the mass even more and check again. Look, it is already stretching a lot, that is we see that depending on the mass, the cloth behavior dramatically changes. Now I want to show you the disadvantage of the set uniform mass method. Let's set such a mass that the clothes barely stretch. So, let's have a look. Good, now let's increase the cloth resolution and see what happens. As you can see, the cloth began to stretch, which happens for one simple reason. After we increase the cloth resolution, the number of points has become more, which means that their total weight increased, that is the clothes just became heavier, which caused stretching. To make it clearer, I suggest raising the resolution even more and see again. Look, now it already stretches decently, as the mass has also increased decently. It turns out, depending on the resolution of the geometry, the mass changes, which in turn entails other changes. Okay, now let's look at the third option setting the mass, which is the calculate uniform mode, that calculates the overall area of each piece multiplied by the density parameter, then distributed equally across each point in that piece. Let's open the geometry spreadsheet and take a look at the mass. See, this value of mass was calculated by taking into account the overall area and point counts. Now let's lower the resolution and see what happens. You see? The mass has changed because the number of points has become less. Let's lower the resolution even further and check again. The mass has become even bigger. It turns out that even if the geometry size will change, the mass will also change. You see? Depending on the area of the geometry, 
the mass either increases or decreases. To summarize, it turns out that the total mass remains the same regardless of the number of points and only changes when the total area changes. Now I propose to check how this affects the simulation. Look, it doesn't stretch at all. Now let's increase the cloth resolution and see again. So, the result is the same, it does not stretch at all, although the resolution has increased four times. Let's continue to increase the resolution and see if it's going to stretch or not. Again, it does not stretch, even though the number of points has increased four times as much. It turns out that the calculate uniform method controls mass and makes clothes less dependent on resolution, and it is important to know that he does it for each piece of geometry separately, and the methods for defining pieces are connectivity. Now let me quickly demonstrate how it works. Duplicate the planar patch node and move it to the right. Decrease its resolution decently. Then just merge these two planar patches before they go into vellum constraint. Look, now we have two merge pieces and they have the same area but a different number of points. So, let's open the geometry spreadsheet and check the mass value for both. Choose from here, only show selected, and then we will select points and turn in both geometries and compare the mass value. As you have already noticed, they have different mass values. That is the vellum constraint used the connectivity to define these two pieces and calculated different masses for them, depending on the resolution. Okay, let's move on. We can already delete the second geometry. We don't need it anymore. I will reduce the resolution of this planar patch for further work. Now I want to show you the disadvantage of this method of calculating mass. Let's reduce the stretch stiffness so that the cloth stretch quite noticeably. Well, I guess that's enough. Now I propose to increase the resolution on some section of this geometry in order to have uneven topology and see what happens. So, to do that, I will use the tridivide node. This node can subdivide a triangulated geometry into smaller triangles. Now let's specify the primitives we want to subdivide. Then, increase the subdivision iteration. So, we got a very dense mesh in the selected area. Let's check how it will look. You see, it stretches unevenly, the dense section is pulling in its direction, because the mass there has become relatively larger. To make this problem worse, I suggest increasing the mesh density in the given section even further, and look again. As you can see, it is already much obvious that in this area the mass has grown strongly. Okay, now I will explain why this is happening. Since the mass is based on a total area and is evenly distributed over all points, the total mass becomes much greater in this dense area. It turns out that where the density is high, more mass accumulates, and this is the main disadvantage of the method for calculating a uniform mass. Now let's look at another way of calculating mass, which is called calculate varying. This mode calculates a varying value for the mass attribute for the points. So, each point accumulates its share of the area of each incident polygon, which is then multiplied by the density. This approach generally gives the most physically accurate results, especially as the resolution of the geometry changes. Now let's open the geometry spreadsheet and check the mass values. As you can see, the mass values are different for all points. Okay, now let's see how this affects the simulation. You see? How evenly the cloth stretches, and this is because the mass was distributed between the points taking into account the mesh density. So, to make it completely clear, let's again open the geometry spreadsheet and check the mass for selected points. Take a look, on a dense area, the mass is very small. Now let's select points on a non-dense area and compare. As you see, 
they already have a much larger mass. To summarize, using the calculate varying method, we get a perfect balance weight when the cloth has an uneven topology. You can also scale the calculated mass values using the density parameter, which is simply a multiplier. If necessary, you can even use the custom point attribute to scale the mass. Okay, let's do that, drop down the attribute pane node. Then, enter the name, that we are going to draw. To initialize the density value of 1, let's select a fill brush here, then just click on geometry. That's it, now let's set a high value for the scaling, choose the surface brush and start painting. To see the painted region, we need to edit the range of the density visualizer. The range from 0 to 1 must be from 0 to 50. Here we go. Now we can clearly see where we have increased the mass by 50 times. So, let's play and see how it looks. As expected, the heavy area stretches the cloth a lot. So, you must always consider that the mass has a huge impact on the simulation. Well, I think we've completely figured out the mass, and we can move on. The next thing I want to talk about is the layer that is directly related to mass, but for that I propose to switch to another scene, where I prepared another example. Now I'll quickly introduce you to an example, and then we'll start. Simplest setup, the collision geometry rotates, and the cloth rotates with it, and of course, all vellum settings by default. Okay, now let's talk about layer. By enabling this parameter, the constraint creates a layer attribute and sets the given value. See, here it is. When you have several layers of cloth, you can assign them consecutive values, and the vellum solver will define a stacking order for layer shock. The layer shock in turn will make lower layers this many times heavier during collision evaluation, ensuring the higher layers will move out of their way. The rest of the dynamics are unaffected by this, and the difference is fixed regardless of the number of layers between the two. This can be thought of as a way to dial between one-way layering of sims and fully coupled sims. So, now I propose to see how it works in practice. Let's turn off the layer option as we are going to create it ourselves. Then I propose to duplicate the tube to make a multi-layered cloth. I will scale the duplicates along the Y and Z axes. Then make 8 duplicate of it. That's it, we already have 8 layers, now I propose to give each of them an individual color, so that they are easy to distinguish. For that I will use a connectivity node to make a unique attribute for each of them. Look, the unique attribute is a class, we can now generate random colors based on this point attribute. Let's drop down the color node. Then, from this menu select a random from attribute and specify the class from here. To change the colors let's tweak the seed value. Here we go, now each of them got a unique color. Well, now let's run the simulation and see what we get. If you look carefully, you will see a lot of penetration going on. Let's take a closer look. There are relatively fewer problem in this frame, let's choose another frame. Look, now there is already a lot of penetration. Moreover, it happened between layers of cloth and in collision geometry. We can even visualize penetrations. Go to the Visualize tab and check the failed self-collision option. Now you can clearly see where the self-penetration occurred. We even have the ability to visualize the penetration into the collision geometry. See, everything that is penetrated inside the collision geometry was marked with orange spheres. Well, now I propose to aggravate the situation a little. For this we just need to increase the radius of simulation tubes, as a result of which their mass will increase, and the penetration will become much more aggressive. As you can see the situation has clearly worsened, 
penetrations are much more frequent and stronger. Let's take another look from the other side. You see, what a terrible result we got, penetrations all over the place. Okay, now let's see how you can solve this problem. The first way is to increase the number of post-collision passes, which does a final round of collision detection after all constraints are performed. Collisions are often the most noticeable failure mode, and it is ideal if the next frame can start with non-intersecting geometry. Thus a final cleanup pass can achieve these requirements. So, let's make it 15 and check the result. To notice the difference let's get closer. As you can see, we have a noticeable improvement, but still there is a penetration. In order to completely get rid of them, we need to increase the post-collision passes even more as well as add few sub-steps, which will be quite expensive in terms of simulation time. Well, now I want to show you the second method for solving this problem, which is much cheaper in terms of simulation time, but at the same time, gives a clear result. So, now we have to create a layer attribute, and for that let's output the copy number as a primitive attribute, which gives us the desired ordering of layers. Now we only need to promote this attribute from primitives to points, and rename it as layer. And we can do this, with attribute promote node. The original class must be a primitive. Now let's specify the copy num attribute here. Then check the change new name option and rename it as layer. Good, let's also set the visualizer for the layer attribute and check their order. Just control click on the layer attribute and Houdini will automatically set the visualizer, then we will only have to change the type from color to marker. Here we go, the value of each layer is displayed and their values are sorted from smallest to largest, just what we need. So, this means, that the mass will also decrease in the same order, that is the smallest layer itself has the most weight, and the largest layer itself has the least weight. Okay, now let's see how this will affect the simulation. You see, absolutely no penetration occurs. They perfectly collide with each other. Let's take a look at the other side. I don't see any penetrations at all, the absolutely clean result came out. And all this is achieved by gradually reducing the mass with layer attribute. Look, because the layer shock is specified for, each layer has four times less weight than the layer below it. We can even reduce decently the post-collision passes, and still we get a clean result. See, almost the same result, although some minor penetrations did occur, but they generally did not affect the simulation in any way. As you can see, everything is clean, there are no problems anywhere. In case if nevertheless there were some problems, we can always increase the layer shock value. That is, now each layer has 10 times less mass than the layer below it. You see? Even those minor penetrations disappeared, we got absolutely clean result. So, that's all for this lesson. In the next lesson, which is already the last, we'll talk about the thickness and triangulation methods. See you in the next lesson.